Six days. That's how long it's been since the deadly mosque shooting in New Zealand, which took the lives of 50 innocent people. And it took just six days for Prime Minister Jacinda uh, Ardern to announce a nationwide ban on all military style semi automatic weapons. The guns used in this terrorist attack had important distinguishing features. They had the power to shoot continuously, but they also had large capacity magazines. In short, every semi automatic weapon used in the terrorist attack on Friday will be banned in this country. All right, let's break that down a little bit. The weapon used in the New Zealand killings uh, was an AR-15 assault rifle. By definition, this uh, by, by Britannica, this is a military-style firearm with the capacity to deliver a high volume of fire with reasonable accuracy. Those things have to go together because it's still a single-pull, single-shot gun like a pistol. It's the idea that they can be accurate uh, with all of those shots. Here in the United States, these weapons are still legal in the majority of states. While there's no way to be sure exactly how many assault-style rifles exist in the United States, the NRA estimates between eight and a half million and 15 million are currently in circulation in the U.S. In 2018 alone, there were a total of 340 mass shootings in the United States. That's nearly one mass shooting per day. So far this year, there have been 62. Gun ownership runs deep in this country's culture, and the numbers prove it. Americans make up 4% of the world's population, but own about 46% of all civilian firearms. At least those were the numbers at the end of 2017. That's nearly half of the world's guns. And this doesn't just have an impact on adults. Firearms are the second leading cause of death in the United States among children and teens. Every day, as Stephanie said, in the United States, about 100 people are killed. Hundreds are injured due to gun violence every single day here in the United States. One third of gun deaths are homicides. The majority uh, of them are suicides, but the U.S. Uh, homicide rate is 25 times that of other high income countries. And nearly 1,700 children and teens die by gun homicide every single year. Steph? Those numbers. Joining us now, Executive Director at the Giffords Law Center, Robin Thomas. Uh, Robin, every town research tells us Mass shootings that involve the use of high capacity magazines resulted in more than twice as many fatalities and 14 times as many injuries on average compared to those that didn't. New Zealand has had just one major mass shooting. The United States, you know this better than we do, has had hundreds. I realize New Zealand is teeny tiny compared to the United States, but why on earth, when you look at these numbers, in your estimation, are we so far behind? I mean, it's just incredible when you consider the fact that one mass shooting happened in New Zealand and the prime minister and the leadership of that country immediately stepped up and took action and decided that this was not an acceptable thing to have happen in their country. And they were going to do whatever it is that was possible to do to regulate and make their country safer. Um, it's an amazing leadership that you've seen there. But you've also seen the prime minister being supported by law enforcement and by the legislature who is saying we need to look at this problem and we need to take immediate swift action so that this does not happen again and they have done that in just six days and you compare that to the leadership in this country where you get thoughts and prayers and empty promises and you don't see any action taken. Uh, I want to ask uh, about something the Washington Post wrote about why New Zealand was able to do what the U.S. can't. And it said, unlike the NRA, New Zealand's interest groups have predominantly lobbied the government quietly rather than threatening politicians with the scorn of its powerful voter base. Tell me uh, w what that's supposed to mean. Well, I mean, I think the truth is we don't they don't have the powerful voter base they would like you to believe. You look at what happened just a year ago this weekend with millions of Americans taking to the streets and marching in the wake of the Parkland tragedy. More than 90 percent of Americans and even gun owners support safety and better regulation of guns. So the NRA might be out there pretending that they have this huge voter base that should be considered more than 90 percent of the American people. But it's a fallacy that they've been propping and that will continue to be propagated until the American people say enough is enough. And I think we're there. You're seeing it now. The House of Representatives passed the first significant legislation in decades just three weeks ago. And it's time now for Senate to take action and for our president to step up to the plate. But the likelihood that the Senate will follow suit, unfortunately, 
um, about zero. Is pretty. I'm not going to say zero, but I'm going to say it's pretty low. Even if the NRA doesn't have the voter base that they claim to do, they have a humongous amount of money, and they can spend that money supporting candidates and hurting other candidates. New Zealand's not in the same situation. That's true, although one of the things that's really interesting about the last election cycle is that advocates who are pushing for gun safety and a safer country and regulation outspent the NRA in the last election cycle. So all of that money that they may have had in the past is now actually dwindling. You're seeing gun ownership dwindling, NRA money is dwindling, and those in support of gun safety are putting more and more energy and time and resources into this. If you look at the numbers, more was spent for gun safety than by the NRA. You saw hundreds of candidates campaigning on a platform for gun safety and winning on that platform in this last election cycle. The hearing that I testified at on February 6th, the energy in the room was incredible. The room was filled with students with March for Our Lives t-shirts who lined up at six or seven in the morning to get a seat in that hearing and fill the room. Yeah. They are not gonna take no for an answer. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.